Well, I would start off by saying that we've made considerable progress in the treatment of HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer. The annual death rate from breast cancer has decreased, and a lot of that has been related to the development of novel therapies. A HER2-positive disease is one of our greatest success stories. And I think that when we look at the sequencing options for our patients in the first and second line setting, we've established clear standards. For our first line patients, we typically start with taxane-based chemotherapy, paclitaxel or docetaxel, given in combination with dual targeted therapy, trastuzumab and pertuzumab, based on the Cleopatra trial, which showed a significant overall survival benefit. There are certain patients where we may deviate from that approach, our triple positive patients who we may want to avoid chemotherapy and start with endocrine therapy in combination with her two targeted treatments. Those uh, situations are more uh, rare. Our standard would be to include chemotherapy for the majority of patients. And then in the second line, we have another clear standard, which is TDXD, and that was based on the Destiny Breast 03 trial, which directly compared the two antibody drug conjugates, TDXD and TDM1, and there was a clear advantage to using TDXD in that setting. Again, the only situation where we might consider deviating from that second line option would be um, a situation where a patient had significant CNS metastases. Uh, specifically, CNS and systemic metastases would uh, prompt me to strongly consider the tocatinib regimen, tocatinib, uh, trastuzumab, and uh, capecitabine based on the HER2 climb data. And then beyond second line, we have some unanswered questions, including is there activity of TDM1 after TDXD, and also how to incorporate some of the other novel treatments, including margituximab. We have data with um, uh, uh, other ty tyrosine kinase inhibitors, including neratinib in combination with capecitabine based on the NALA trial. And um, of course, we still have chemotherapy and trastuzumab available as well. So the good news for our patients is that we have um, an ever-expanding algorithm with several, several new novel therapies in the pipeline as well. Uh, so hopefully, we'll continue to see improvements for our patients.